Hello and welcome to another video from the Polaronic PC Wargamers using the John Tiller system um, to highlight the games, different units in the games, different tactics and warfare in the age of Napoleon. Today we're going to look at massed formations and have a look a little bit more in depth about warfare and discuss it in the age of Napoleon. Um, now in an ideal world um, we're going to have our troops laid out something like this. I'm just going to go through the reasons why, what everybody does, what everybody's role was and my reasoning behind it. Now in an ideal world, if we managed to get our troops like this, it would be absolutely perfect. But there's going to be a lot of factors coming into play. Um, your troops aren't maybe going to be in a position to, to form as they are on the screen there. Um, and there might be all sorts of different terrain and trees and villages and towns and rivers and what have you. Um, coupled with all that, as we move into position, our enemy are going to be approaching us as well. Alright, so the first thing then, you can see out front I have a rather large skirmisher line. Now a skirmisher line, hopefully, as these troops start to approach us, they're going to have to deal with our skirmishers. Even if all my troops were not in position as they are now, these approaching soldiers and troops are still going to have to deal with these skirmishers before they get to my main body of troops. My skirmishers are going to disrupt and harass and take opportunity fire against officers and things like that. Um, and generally just be a thorn in the side of any advancing troops. The idea being that even if I haven't got my troops into position, I will buy myself a little bit of uh, uh, time, a few turns, so I can get the rest of my troops into formation. I also have some skirmishers on my flank as well, because they also act on the flank, um, as well as vanguard and rearguard, just to watch out for any approaching soldiers or troops that may approach my flank, and to do pretty much the same job as they are doing up here. Now, skirmishers generally were armed with a rifle and rifles weren't that commonplace in the age of Napoleon. Um, the other weapon that was used was the small bore musket and used by pretty much 90% let's say of the line infantry. Now the smooth bore, bus smooth bore musket didn't take much training, anybody could sort of pick up and use it and the training was pretty quick to be honest, um, but it did have some disadvantages over the rifle and the rifle had some advantages over the, um, over the musket. The biggest one was that anybody armed with a rifle could have an effective range of up to around 300 yards, give or take. While a musket had a range of around 80 to 100 yards on a good day. However, a musket had a higher rate of fire, and a reasonably well-trained troop, as long as he wasn't under, uh, under pressure, would be able to get off maybe two to four rounds, somewhere around that per minute. It would get less, obviously, um, as fatigue kicked in, as pressure kicked in. Um, but on a good day, they could get off maybe even up to five shots per minute. With a rifle though, it was slower to load, they had to pack the ball down, um, it was a lot tighter, and even a good shot could get to maybe three on a good day um, per minute. Rifles were also more expensive to produce, took more training and stuff like that, so not everybody's armed with a rifle, they weren't that commonplace. Next in line then, I've got some artillery. Now, it might seem strange to have artillery out front, but I've made sure that they are light guns. Along with these skirmishers are going to take casualties of these approaching troops, also these light guns are going to hopefully take some uh, inflict some casualties as well. Um, I have them at the front, I don't have too many at the front, only a, only a handful, okay, I've got a lot of artillery, probably more than you would pot potentially have for this size formation. Um, but as soon as they pretty much reach the skirmisher line, and it is worthy to note that they can fire through a skirmish line, so they won't hit the skirmish in front and be uh, the line of sight blocked. Um, and then I will limber them up and bring them back to a position, possibly on the flank, overlooking uh, the flank of these troops here, or back through these gaps here. Um, I've then got my main line, and because I'm in a defensive formation, with these troops approaching, I pretty much want to bring as much firepower to bear as possible. My best bet with doing that is having a line formation. Um, I've double stacked, so I've got um, essentially a thousand men, over a thousand men, um, not all in one big line, um, but a line formation gives us the maximum amount of firepower. Uh, depending on the nation, have different doctrines. Uh, the French, for example, would have uh, their men within a battalion in three lines, and the first two would uh, fire, 
and the third one would step to the side and fire through the gap of the ones in front. The British had a different doctrine. They thought, well, no, we can bring more firepower to bear if we have two lines. So that's more muskets firing. Um, and it, invariably, they used to win the firefight when it was um, line versus line or line versus column, just because they held the fire to the last minute um, when they were within range. Um, talking about range, with uh, any uh, weapons before, I have discussed them before, we can come up to the help box, have a look at the parameter data, go down towards the bottom of the parameter data and we can see our weapons. So a British musket can fire a maximum of two hexes, whereas a rifle can go all the way up to four hexes, so around 400 meters as we said. Um, so yeah, we're going back to our line formations. Now, because we have double stacked line formations in this case, and this Hanoverian regiment has snuck through so we have a, a chance to fire on him, we can only fire with one of these units at a time and it will be the unit that is in the top of the stack or the, the higher unit up. That unit below these line troops here cannot fire uh, because they're behind the unit in front. We'd have to bring them into the front and I'll show you what I mean by that. So we select these first line troops. They fired and now we want to fire with these guys as well because we still have a shot. But if I was to select them now and try and fire, it doesn't let me do it because down in the bottom left it cannot fire behind infantry in line. So what we have to do is select those infantry, come to the command menu and put them to the top of the stack. Now they're at the top of the stack, they now have a chance to fire. So we're maximising our firepower with two formations, two battalions in line. So what we'll do, select them, and they're going to have a go for them as well. Now we don't generally move around in line formation because uh, uh, the main advantage of a line formation, it gives us a maximum uh, offensive advantage, firepower advantage. However, moving around was cumbersome, it was slow, we have a chance of being disordered. Um, so I wouldn't really move around the field, certainly any over any great distance or over any terrain, using line formation. Um, it's also vulnerable to the flank as well. Imagine cavalry in this area here on the right hand side. Those, ca those line infantry are pretty much wide open. And at, at Albuera in Spain, um, there was a case where the British lost nearly everybody, nearly the whole battalion, um, or whole brigade actually, um, uh, when out of the rain or out of the fog came some French light -like cavalry and pretty much took every man. There was only a handful of men left. So they are vulnerable on their flanks. Now because we've got a mixed order formation, we've sort of had the foresight, if you like, to protect our flanks a little bit. And we're going to protect our flanks ideally with light troops or pretty good quality troops, B, A, and maybe even guard troops. That's because, twofold, we're quite weak on our flanks anyway. We won't probably have as many troops as we will in the centre on our flanks. And don't forget, the good guards and light infantry can break off into as many skirmish units as, as they want, and we might need to do that. Whereas line infantry, um, and if it's militia even, they couldn't break off into skirmishes, and line infantry can generally break off into one skirmish unit. So we've got to think that about that. In the front, I would generally have medium quality troops. I wouldn't put my best troops um, in the, in the, on the front line. I would have them back as a mobile reserve, so we'll talk about them in a little bit. But generally, we're going to have our line troops. They're made up the guts of any formation. Um, we always had more infantry, um, not in every scenario, but in general we had more infantry than we did cavalry and certainly artillery. So they are your um, main troops, if you like, your go-to troops. They're designed to inflict casualties on the enemy um, and then push them back. Okay, next in line then, um, or we can also see here we do have some light troops in line, um, even though they would potentially armed with rifles and with active skirmishes. So just because they say light troops and um, the light troops come in different names, they can be called Jaegers, uh, 95th Rifles. Uh, Vol de Gours, um, in France, um, they, they're sort of jack of all trades. They can also act as infantry in line, can form square, and can go into column as well. Next line then, after that, and um, I've got some horse artillery in these gaps. Now I have purposefully left gaps in my front line 
Um, okay, I've filled it in with artillery in this case, but I've made sure that's horse artillery in an ideal world. That horse artillery is going to do the same job as the frontline uh, light guns there. However, because these are a lot more mobile, and um, they can limber, they've got more movement points, they can get out of the way pretty sharpish, should I need to open that gap and allow troops to get through. If I had one big solid line of everybody in mine, um, I couldn't pass anything through there. They're going to suffer either a disorder penalty, so if I was to bring my cavalry up through the infantry, actually going through the same stack, we're going to get a disorder penalty. Um, and the other thing is there is a stacking limitation as well. We can't just stack unlimited number of troops and cavalry into one hex so the chances are we might not be able to get them in the same hex anyway regardless so that horse artillery there to inflict some casualties on that advancing infantry um, and then as they get closer to that skirmish line bring them back and then maybe set them off at an angle through that gap so they can fire with line of sight through that gap on any uh, troops as well